Hi. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the beginning of another vlog. It is Tuesday afternoon. Just got back from work. Uh, and my phone is ringing. Hello? <sighs> Call center. Call center. Give me a sec. Ah. So I just got back from work. It's been a, a long, long day, but uh, it's been a long day, but it's been a rather productive one, you know? So just got back from work. I'm going to continue doing some more work, uh, but now it's going to be school work and not necessarily work work. Um, so I'm gonna set up over there and um, continue with the affairs of the day. I just wanted to introduce this vlog um i feel like doing burgers for dinner i feel like doing burgers um well a burger in my case a burger uh with maybe like a nectarine salsa because i would have done a mango salsa but we don't have mangoes currently at the moment um so nectarine is the next best sweetest thing that's like very similar to a mango in my in my defense uh, in terms of sweetness wise so i'm going to do that later and maybe we can film that together because i know i haven't filmed a lot of food content i just don't have the time you know i'll, I'll do like sit down content because i have designated days for that but i can't do like a sit down content along with doing <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying so it's 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 just a bit slack no give me a break okay so i just got back from work the power is going to go at six this afternoon <laughs> thanks Ishkom. and um so because of that i'm going to have to start preparing my food at around four so i'm giving myself two hours now to just push whatever i can in terms of my school work and i've got a couple of other things that i need to do uh computer work and then I'll prepare dinner. I'll prepare the burgers. I don't mind eating early um, and, and just stuffing my face early. Uh, but for now, I just had my first meal of the day. <laughs> I had a green smoothie about half an hour ago. Just as soon as I walked into the house, I had one. And now I feel like having, because it's so warm. It was cold in the morning, but it's getting warm again. I'm assuming cold fronting vibes, you know? Um, so I'm going to have a, I really, really am fixing to have another iced coffee. I feel like it is, tis the season for iced coffees, my darling. So I'm going to have that while I do some work. And then when I sit down over there, I'm going to talk to you about the books that I'm currently reading. I am still reading Mbolo, Imbolo Mbue's How Beautiful We Were. And oh, what a sad story. Oh, it's hard to get through it because it's really sad. But is it a good, good book? So far, yes. Um, then there's the merciless ones. <laughs> I have opinions. I have opinions. Um, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. <clears throat> Lips are kind of dry. Be like that sometimes. Um, let me know what you think of the, you know, the footage of uh, using the Sony and everything because I'm kind of loving the footage. So the last two or three vlogs, I've been using the Sony quite a bit. What is going on with the cameras? Give me a second. What is this, honey? What is this? So let's make this coffee and I'm gonna set you up over there. We're gonna talk about these books. We're gonna start talking about books in this vlog. Get that out of the way. Um, I wanna try and finish one of these novels this week and I'm hoping the merciless ones so I can get it out of the way and then next week I can continue on with Mbolumbu is how beautiful we were just in time for the live and for the virtual uh, book club review session you know so yeah honey let's make this coffee shall we Cause I don't know how this gonna end Oh no Tell me now, tell me something Cause I don't wanna be just friends No, no Yeah Hear me out, hear me out I can make you do the craziest things Yeah 
Mamas, hi, Bumis Mamas. Um, before I start setting up, I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. Now, the first two things we're going to talk about are these two books. Um, and let's talk about the one that I'm not really that crazily impressed by. Now, I am about 140 pages into this, and this is the sequel to The Gilded Ones. This is The Merciless Ones by Namina Fauna. And you guys know how The Gilded Ones went with me, okay? It was a little bit tricky. I wasn't sure. And then once it hit the 130 page mark, it skyrocketed for me and then I really enjoyed it. Now, The Gilded Ones and The Merciless Ones are a young adult fantasy um, series of novels. And this is just a continuation of Decker's story. Now, if you watch my vlogs, you'll know I spoke about Decker's story and what have you. Um, this one starts off with Decker now um, knowing her place in the world. She is now the new Nuru and she has freed the goddesses of her you know, community, her tribe, the Death Shriek, the Alakai. And she's like the leader of, of this community. And it pretty much opens up with them taking on, you know, um, freeing the Alakai and freeing the young girls and the young women in different communities and different villages and that kind of stuff. Um, and we just start see, to see uh, her work as the Nuru and her powers have actually uh, increased as well. She can do more things than she could do in the previous book, which is, which, which is wonderful. That was good to see. Uh, what I didn't like about this one was it was rather repetitive in the beginning and I understand that because the previous one was released a year before or was it two years before I think it was a year before and I understand for somebody who read it when it was released that maybe the repetition might be a little bit of a good thing to remind them of what happened in the Gilded Ones <sighs> but for me, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of moving slowly for me. Uh, I'm at the part where, um, you know, the, the goddesses have been rescued and the firstborn, uh, Melina, or Man Manila, Melina. <laughs> See, I don't even remember their names, Chef. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which, uh, Melanis, Melanis, yes who is uh, one of the firstborns of this, you know, uh, family of uh, Alakai and family of goddesses and all of that. She is freed by Decca and her warriors. And then they find out that one of the emperors, is it an emperor? It's really true. An elder, I think. One of the elders is at this one village and they want to capture this elder so that they can question him and ask him why is it that the competitors to the Alakai and all of that, the people that they fight normally, the warriors that they fight against who are known as the Jatu, 
why are the Jatu surviving? Because typically it's the, the Alakai who don't die. The Death Shriek, all of that, the Death Shriek die. But the Alakai who don't die, they just get reincarnated a second time around. But as far as we knew from the first book, the Jatu did die, except they don't in the second one. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Am I loving it? Not so much. Um, I feel like I just want to get through it. And it's definitely something I'm going to read tonight um, while I have a power outage. So I'm going to read it, okay? We'll try and get through it. Maybe it's going to kick up at some point. I don't know. I'm going to try and get through 100 pages of it today, hopefully. Um, last night, I was reading this. This is what we are reading for the Brown Skin Reads Book Club. This is How Beautiful We Were by Imbolo Mbue. And oh my gosh. There's something that I really love about adult contemporary fiction. There's, that's, that's why I'm so pulled to adult contemporary fiction, whether in the form of, um, you know, literary fiction or in the form of thrillers or horrors or whatever. Sometimes even maybe historical fiction as well. There's something about how relatable some most a lot of those books are, especially if you're reading a book that was written in the last couple of years. So this one um, is um, How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbue, and this follows multiple points of view uh, with following the people of a village called Kosawa. Now in this village, an American company, Paxton, has come into this village years and years ago, um, and they started drilling for oil and creating pipelines for oil. Now this village gets badly impacted by this. Initially, the Americans come in and they say, look, it's going to help progression. It's going to help your economy. There's going to be job creation. We are typically familiar with this. As Africans, we know about colonialism and exploitation and um, 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 the stealing, the slavery and the stealing of um, uh, African resources to enrich American or Western civilization. So we know about this, right? So reading this, is not unfamiliar to me or the history of many African countries, but it's really hard to read about in this book because the people of this village where this drilling and, and this oil is happening are suffering the after effects of all of this work that is happening. The children are dying, the water is poisoned, um, and the, 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 the village, the people of the village are not seeing the rewards that they were promised when these Americans came into this village and started mining for oil. So it's, it's harrowing, man. It's a really, really sad start. I'm like, I'm tabbing because I tab a lot, especially when it's a book that I'm going to be doing for the book club. I'm tabbing it, but um, it's wonderfully written. There are so many passages that I've like highlighted and things like that. It really is wonderfully written. But it's a really sad story. So at this, let me let me have a sip of my coffee, okay? Yeah. Yep, yep. Fruits of the forest, yeah. Um, what else? Just another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I get a lot of questions in my comment section. Maybe a few, maybe would be DM'd to me about where I'm studying and also questions about uh, just really personal information. One of the recent ones is where I'm studying. And the reason why I do not talk about where I'm studying is because it's personal to me. And as much as I may not be a well-known content creator or public figure or what have you quite a number of people do know who i am and for just privacy reasons i don't want to say oh yeah i'm studying with uj or whatever and then you have people trying to find out information and all of that it's just for privacy reasons i do not mind speaking about where i've studied once i finish graduating and i'll be happy to share that kind of information where i did my life coaching course and all of that it wasn't just that it was a number of other things um like someone asked me um now that you're attending events and things like that how does this impact your day-to-day -day, nine to five like are you going to your nine to five whatever and i was just like 
I'm still working. I still do my nine to five. I don't see why I need to explain why this, that, and the other. I take time off work like everybody else does. Um, and if I need to put in leave, I do sometimes. I, it's, it's actually a working day. I don't feel the need to explain certain things. Um, but the, the school one, it was the school one and there was another one where I was asked and I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to divulge that information. That is personal information for me that applies to me for now. Once I finish, I think just please maybe give me the courtesy of respecting the fact that I don't want to say where I'm studying. I don't want to say where, it's like saying where you live and all of that kind of stuff. Let it come out, the studying bit, where I'm studying once I finish graduating. Then I know that I'm no longer part of the system. I'm no longer there. If people start calling that institution, trying to find out, or oh, who is whatever, it's not me saying that he gets a bit or anything like that. No, it's just me saying that give me that privacy while I am studying um, to finish. And then we'll talk about things like that. Um, so that was the other thing I wanted to mention. And speaking of studying, that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm going to be finishing off my assignment. And my book, my study book got rained on, not rained on, uh, water spilled. Water spilled at the back of my car. I don't know how, how it was a bottle of water and I don't think it was tied on correctly. And now my book looks terrible and I hate it. I feel like getting a new one. I hate it so much, but <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to have to do my schoolwork, do what I have to do, finish off my assignment. And then I've got a couple of computer, couple of computer work. Wow. Some things to do on the PC. Uh, anyway, going to get some work done. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. There is something else I wanted to say, I just don't remember. And for now, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. In the evening, you'll be calling. In the evening, you'll be calling. So it is four o'clock, and as I said, I'm so sorry, I just got a text from my sister. My sister has really crazy timing. Uh. <laughs> okay, she was just responding to something. Okay, um, uh, so <laughs> I'm going to, it's four o'clock, and I said I'm going to be making mango salsa, and not mango salsa in this case nectarine salsa okay uh and i'm gonna be putting it in a jar and then i'm going to put it in the fridge so salsa in a jar you know what i'm saying and just because it's me i took out two jars to be safe if, if i want to make more uh pretty much i'll be eating it throughout the week but maybe one jar will be sufficient maybe not 
you can still make quite a bit of it and then put it in there as well so i'm going to run you through what i'm going to be doing chopping up that kind of thing um and what you need so for the nectarine salsa you need a nectarine you could even use two maybe you want to do two jars it's fine a nectarine a red pepper this one is on its last legs that's why i have to use it it's shriveling up so it's on its last legs uh cilantro or else known as in other parts of the world coriander you need that i know a lot of people don't necessarily like coriander so you don't have to add that but i kind of feel like that's what gives salsa its thing right coriander um then i'm going to add cucumbers because i like cucumber and i kind of add it to everything and then a red onion that's pretty much, that's it. The lemon and lime, and then of course, um, seasoning. Seasoning, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna cut everything up. I'm gonna place my camera in such a way that you can see what I'm doing, and then you can follow along. But really, this is all it is, and everything just needs to be cut up, put in a container. And then you put it in the fridge. Really, it, it won't take longer than 10, 15 minutes. So let's do it. Okay. I gotta tell you something I could do. I could be running or I'm chasing you. But I won't. Because I got better, better things to do. I just spent my precious time. Jesus, somebody who loves me too. If I got a dollar for every time you slam the door, I would be the richest girl alive, alive, alive. If you hadn't run away every time I asked you stay, you would sleep right next to me tonight. But you didn't know me, all you wanted was a game to play.
Oh, 